Hello, my name is Diane Gardner and I suffer with Cushing's disease. My name is Michelle Murphy, uh, I suffer from Cushing's disease. My name is Eric Howard, I'm 60 years of age and I suffer with a very rare condition called acromegaly. It changed my life where I used to be an outgoing, bubbly person, wanted to go out, enjoy myself. It, it came to a point where I didn't want to go out. I had no clothes to fit me. I became more depressed. I couldn't do everyday things. Um, um, me ill, the ill health. I didn't want to go to bed because I had no energy. I was always tired, falling asleep. I uh, had bad mood swings, very, very bad mood swings. The slightest thing would just freak me out. It just shouted nothing and just freak, freak and all this. Um, even when things weren't wrong, I just thought everything was wrong. I hated everybody. As regards in my personal life, the way it affected me just before I was diagnosed is horrendous to say the least. Uh, I would have terrible rows with, with my wife who I'm six foot two and she is five foot so there's no competition really but I would sadly to say I would upset her over the silliest stupidest little things and she'd be standing next to me and she'd, there'd be tears running down her, eye, her cheeks and she'd say why are you being like this and it was as if it was as if there was like a devil inside me because my hormones were radiant. It changed my life where I became more of a recluse. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want people pointing the finger at me. Um, basically, you name it, I became a recluse, older before my time, put it that way. Uh, I'd shout at my son for no reason, so, you know, I'd cry, I got so depressed. More so because every time I went to the hospital, he didn't know what was wrong with me, so that, of course, got me down. Because you know your own body, you know how it works, you know there's something wrong. So when no one's listening, you know, you do get quite depressed because you know deep down. I was sat in the front room of, of my house and I started crying while watching the telly. And it wasn't even a, a, a sort of a weepy film. And my wife walked in, she said, what's the matter? And I said, oh, I feel terrible. I feel, I feel absolutely terrible. The symptoms were, I was feeling basically depressed, down. I was putting on so much weight and people couldn't understand why this was happening. Um, my period stopped, hormones went everywhere, didn't feel too good. Because the, the bones in your arms and your knees diffused together at, at the end of puberty. So what happened to me was I grew sideways. My hands grew massive. My feet grew massive. My internal organs were growing older and faster than I was growing older. The symptoms I've actually had was the shape of the outgrown of the face, they call it moon face, by the way, um, cracked ribs, excess of hair. Enlargement of tongue, the back of your tongue, uh, which causes sleep apnea when you're in bed at night time. When you lie on your back, you, your tongue swells to each side, which blocks your airway off, and you wake up panicking for air. That's another side effect of it. How I was diagnosed with this condition was quite funny, actually. I'd actually fallen over in the place of work, where I worked at the time, and I'd hit my bottom. I'd actually split a muscle. I go to my GP, and he was a typical old doctor and he would say take these tablets one month take these tablets the next month then one time I went to the meal doc back to the doctors and he turned around or rather the receptionist said your own GP is not here today you'll have to see a locum doctor so I said okay no problem I went in and there was a young boy a young lad of about I don't know 28 a rugby shirt on and he said sit down mate I was sat with my hands crossed on my lap and uh, this young doctor walked over to a filing cabinet and as he went to open the filing cabinet he looked down at my hands now to me my hands have always looked big but they're my hands so I didn't know that they were any bigger 
than anybody else's. And he picked one in his hands up and he held it in his hands and he went, where did you get these hands from? And I said, I've had them all my life. He said, no, I, how long have you noticed that they've been like this? I said, well, I don't notice that they're like this at all. So he, he sort of looked concerned, scratched his head, said he'd learned something a few years ago when he was in training as a doctor. And he asked me to go and have some tests, which I did. I had a test called a pituitary function test. I had another I had nine fires of blood taken out of me. And I was asked to go back and see him the following day, which I did. And by some remarkable thing on his part, I had the blood test back within 24 hours. Then he said to me, he said, I think you've got a certain condition, but I'm not quite sure. And I've booked you in to see uh, a radiographer to have an MRI scan, which is a detailed scan of your, of your brain or any specific part of your body, which gives a thousand times clearer picture than an ordinary x-ray. And went back to the doctors and he said to me, he said, I've made you an appointment, Mr. Howard. He said for next Monday at two o'clock, to see a brain surgeon to wit I said that's enough you either tell me what you think now or I'm walking out because I've still got a pain in my bum which I haven't had no medication for and you're telling me now that I've, I've got to see a brain surgeon and then he turned around and he said to me he said Mr Howard he said I think you've got this condition called acromegaly The Pituitary Foundation Club, what it brings to you is the courage to have that little bit of fight in you, to go forward, to listen to people. You can have the support there, it's just amazing. What it brings to you is to say that you're not alone. The Pituitary Foundation is quite good because, you know, when you walk in, everyone welcomes you and they all sort of know what you've been through or going through, more so than the people on the outside world. You'll meet some wonderful people who will put your mind at ease right away. They'll initially calm you down. If you tell them what area you live in, they will give you the, the, the nearest telephone buddy, somebody with your condition, somebody for you to sit and talk to, and uh, hopefully uh, alleviate any fears that you may have on the start of whatever procedure you're going to have. They're there for you. You're not alone. That's what the Pituitary Foundation Club bring to you. There's always someone there for you. You're never alone. Thank you.